Yo, what's going on people? Welcome to Legends of Soul. And for those of you that's new to this content, um, this is basically a celebration of success really. Um, We celebrate the artists that have made soulful music over the years. We take a look at their careers. We explore that. And we look at their accolades and talk about that because sometimes I feel like a lot of dope artists get shadowed or get shelved or not even not even just that there's some that are still doing bits now but I feel like there's a lot of people that have set the pace for this new generation and all the new music we make there's people that set the pace there's people that have had long careers and I just thought about highlighting that you know so I decided on making this style of content so um today I'm talking about Omar um, it's a bit close to home because Omar was from London um, they say he's the forefather of Neo Soul and we'll get into why and we'll get into that right now so Omar's full name is Omar Christopher Lai Fook. I hope I said that right he was born on the 14th of October in 1968 coming from a household full of musicians he had two brothers and a sister who were all musicians I read that his sister went to the Brit school as well. He is a British soul singer, songwriter and musician. He grew up in Canterbury, Kent. And as he was growing up, he learned how to play the trumpet, piano and percussion. He also spent two years at Cheltenham's School of Music in Manchester and the Guide Hall School of Music in London. He is mostly known for his hit record, There's Nothing Like This, um, that's probably one of the most recognisable tunes, I would say. Um, it's a very good song as well. Serious horizontal dancing music, I think you know what I'm talking about. This is like serious, chill-out music, you know. It just captured everybody's imagination, didn't it? I mean, you'd hear, they just played it to the black radio stations. It was like, you know, what programming are we going to do today? All my tune. All right, good. It was like 24-hour coverage. They just played it all the time. It must have been wonderful for you. Well, definitely. You know, when I wrote the song and I was listening back to it again and again, that's, those are the kind of things that I was imagining. You know, hearing it on the, you know, the, the pirate stations, you know, dance and clubs and stuff, and just imagine the bass line kick in and how people would be chatting over it and stuff. But you never actually think that's going to happen until you actually hear it. So when it did happen, you know, it was like, yeah, wicked. You know, must have been great. Yeah. Yeah. And this song reached number 14 in the UK singles chart on re-release in 1991. When I did There's Nothing Like This, I made a cassette of, like a 90 minute cassette of just that song (laughs) over and over and over again. And I and, and I played it to people like that, and they yeah. never got bored of it. So I yeah. thought, okay, that's got the that passed the test. So any song that I make now has to pass the same test. All music claimed he is described by some as the father of neo soul. Now, I think it's safe to say that I don't know about that across the waters. I'm not sure. Can't really speak on it. But I can say that he's an OG in a game, you know, and. Um, I personally got into Neo Soul in 2006 so um, he was doing things way before that 
Uh, so I can't either. I, I can't say who is the forefather, but I can definitely agree that in UK, I don't really know any other artist that was doing neo soul around his time when he started it. Maybe after, but he was probably one of the first people to do it. Before nothing like this, he released two singles: one titled "Mr. Postman" and then another track called "You and Me," which featured background vocals from Karen Wheeler. Who knows about Karen Wheeler? I'm due to do a Legends of Soul on her, or basically her group, Soul to Soul. That's where she's from, for all those that don't know. Very talented singer. Um, I released my first single in 1984. Uh, it was on my father's independent label, Conga Dance. And the track was called Mr. Postman, and I hated it with a passion. Well, after two weeks of hearing it, because you know when you make your music and you're gonna hear it on the radio, or TV or whatever, you're gonna hear it over and over and over again. And after two weeks of it, I just said, I just did not like the tune. Omar released his debut album, There's Nothing Like This, in 1990. So he kept that theme for the album, basically. He, what, what's interesting is he released this on his father's label, which was called Congo Records at the time. And at this point, the album peaked at 37 in the UK album's charts. He then signed to a major label called Talking Loud, and they re-released the album which then peaked number 19 in the charts. So obviously he released the album first with his dad, then went on to release with the label. And I don't know the reasons, I know a lot of artists, I'm guessing that his dad's label was an independent art and label, but I know a lot of artists tend to move to the major label department or to a major label in general. That's usually um, for extra funding or, you know, to reach a wider or bigger audience. But looking at the stats here, I think him being with his father label and getting 37 in the charts is more of a testimony on the music, how good the music is as well. And that is a good achievement. And it's not really that far off from the achievement he got with the label. So, yeah, it's quite interesting and... Obviously, he had his reasons for getting going to the major label, but yeah, both ways, I think it worked well, to be honest. Uh, the first album I did on the independent label with my dad, and we yeah. did it on a budget kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and then we did it again for Talking Loud. Yeah. Uh, so there's two versions of that. So then moving on to 1992, he um, released a second album, which peaked at 37, which is actually the same number as his dad's label. Um, previously when they released nothing like this. He then signed to RCA Records and then started collaborating with other musicians. A standout collaboration to me personally was one with Stevie Wonder. Okay, okay. so how, how did you meet and where did you meet, Omar? Um, well, basically we got together uh, through uh, Keith Harris. What were you going to say? No, no, actually, actually, I met Omar... We were in a we were in a uh, a racing car event, <laughs> and I was driving my car, and he was, and he was winning. He was winning. Ils étaient donc dans une course automobile et Stevie était au volant et c'est lui qui gagnait la course automobile et c'est comme ça qu'ils sont rencontrés. Bon, et donc, ça va pas être facile, mais je vais y arriver. Come on, please help me. We met, we, we, How we can I be when he's talking like that? We met at the studio, at my studio in Wonderland. In Wonderland, and. Right. Um, Ils sont rencontrés à Los Angeles, donc in Wonderland. Is that true that you've heard uh, music, uh, one title on the album of Omar, and you did ask uh, to meet him? Yeah, I, I liked his voice a lot, and I liked his uh, his style. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> il aime la voix d'Omar et ses deux limitations. Oh, oh, I can't do that impression. Wow. That's too good for me. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You want that's the job you That's another dream comes yeah, to you. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. You might, might get a job in a couple of years. He lui propose du boulot pendant deux ans. Keep it up. When I, when I grow up, I want to be just like Omar. Get out some time. Get up, I'm playing 
And a few of these other notable collaborations were with Angie Stone. <laughs> Don E, Erica Badu, Guru, Kelly La Rock, Common, Old Dirty Bastard. In 1996, he contributed a song called Water to Drink to the AIDS Benefit album produced by the Red Hot Organization. So obviously he got his little charity on, you know, doing a bit for the community and that. In 2006, Omar won Best Neo Soul at an Outstanding Achievement Award at the Urban Music Awards. So, what's funny to me is, remember I said earlier that I got into Neo Soul around 2006, when I got properly into Neo Soul. And it's funny because he won an award for Outstanding Achievement. So you know that he's a real OG in the game. Like he's he really has been doing things way before I even got into this kind of sound. You know what I'm saying? So um big up Elmer for that and 
yeah, you see why they called him a father of Neil. So, Omar decided to get involved with acting. He started by studying at the Identity Drama School and then on the 11th of June 2009, he made his acting debut in Shea Walker's musical title, Been So Long. He was awarded with an MBE in 2012 for his service in music. So an MBE basically stands for, for those that don't know, a member of the Order of the British Empire. During July and August 2015, Omar appeared as part of the house band in the BBC2 comedy series, The Javon Print Show. In June 2017, he was one of the artists for Grenfell, who performed the number one charity single, Bridge Over Troubled Water, in aid of the victims of the Grenfell Tower Fire. On that note, I just want to say RIP to all the victims of Grenfell, and I also want to say I pray that God blesses and covers, looks after the victims that survived. And I hope, you know, they've got shelter and they're being looked after, you know. I've heard different stories on that. So all I can do is pray that God be, that God is with them, basically. So, yeah. So back to Omar. As you see, he's done, you know, he's done a lot in the game and he has given back. Like, you can see that he's about the people and he thinks about all that stuff. So with the style of music Omar makes, that neo soul, you know, that soulful kind of jazzy style, usually it sounds great with a band, doesn't it? So um, I've got some information on some band members that, you know, he, you would usually find him performing with. I don't know how many are still active now or whatever, but I'll just read the names that I have. So as a drummer, we've got Darren Abraham, bass guitar, Colin McNeish, keyboards and vocals, Lennox Cameron, guitar, Howie Gondwe, and vocals, Chris Borlin. For those that don't know, Omar has released quite a few albums and I um, recommend you go check them out if you haven't already, if you're not a fan. And maybe you just need that reminder if you are a fan already to go and listen to some good music, yeah? So he released There's Nothing Like This as stated before in 1990. He then released an album called Music in 1992. Then it was a album called For Pleasure, 1994. This Is Not A Love Song, 1997, we had Best By Far in 2001, an album called Sing in 2006, an album called The Man in 2013, Loving Beats in 2017, Black Notes From The Deep in 2017 also. So, you know, you want to find out who I'm talking about or you already know Omar and you're like, you know what? I need some new music or some old school music to get back into. Go and check them albums out, man. Big up Omar. So that basically sums up this video on Omar. Um, he's a great musician, very good voice, very good music, whole tie all his band members. I recommend you check him out as stated. And yeah, celebration of success. Someone we support soul music and for someone to be known as a forefather of this is only right to give him his props you know so yeah um subscribe to the channel for more content like this we've also got soulmate suggests which we're bringing new artists to you as well and you know visit our website www.soulmateonline.org social media at soulmate ldn and yeah, stay posted because this content's all about good music, you know? Peace.